Hi everyone. So this will be most likely my last video covering Diablo Immortal. I think it has become pretty obvious that a lot of people are leaving the game, a lot of content creators are unhappy and also moving on, and that includes me. And on top of this, there is also some pretty big news that by the time this video is released, might be out already, maybe they will come very soon regarding max roll so i will not really further specify this here right now but overall it's not really going in the direction that yeah i would have liked so while i can say that i'm very happy to have you guys here watching my content supporting me writing comments you know all that stuff and i have fun you know making that content it was never really a like long-term perspective for me in this game ever since I saw what the monetization would be like. So in this video, I will just be talking about the game, about the timeline. I have prepared a few notes just to, you know, move along a little bit with the topics. And I just wanna go through all of them one by one to give you a bit my perspective, how I saw things from, you know, the announcement originally all the way up to now. So let's start with a few words about me for people that are rather new and don't know me very much. I am mainly a Diablo 3 streamer and YouTuber. I've been playing the game since its release 10 years ago. I have been blasting, you know, trying the biggest achievements possible in that game, as I did in many other games. I've been playing a lot of different video games in my youth, and that includes a lot of Blizzard games. So um, I've been gaming for two decades at this point, basically. And uh, there was Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, WoW, that I played for, you know, a decade at um, basically the top levels in both PvE and PvP. Obviously Diablo 2 when I was young, and I've also been enjoying other Blizzard titles like Overwatch and Hearthstone, because generally I really like the company, I really like the games they make, and I don't really have like huge issues with the company as a whole. I know there have been scandals and all this kind of stuff. Obviously I don't want to excuse bad stuff that's happening or has happened in the past, with just one point, but overall I'm I'm rather positive towards Blizzard, I would say, as I am with pretty much anything in this world. I am generally a very optimistic person. I'm generally someone who has not really a clear picture of black and white, of good and bad. I'm someone who has a very holistic approach to you know anything basically. And uh, that includes, you know, gaming, that includes uh, real life issues, that includes, you know, my friends, people I know, that includes, you know, politics, anything, basically. I'm not someone who has really strong opinions based on, you know, like a single incident or something like that. I always try to see the bigger picture. As a gamer, I'm an extremely competitive player, so I, I just like to challenge myself. I like to get rank once. I like to try to be the best in anything I do. I have been doing this for many, many years in almost every single game. I never really play something very casually. There are a few games, you know, maybe somewhere, you know, back in the day when I was like a kid and I had no clue how to play. But yeah, ever since I can remember almost, I always pushed for the maximum. And obviously, if you look at the history of my channel, then you will see that in action. So, so much from me. Let's talk about the game. So, Diablo Immortal was announced, I believe that was 2018 at this point. Uh, and obviously, everyone expected Diablo 4. Including myself, I was not ready for this announcement. And I was also extremely pessimistic about playing a mobile game. So my extent of mobile gaming experience was like Snake on like a Nokia phone like 15 years ago. That was about the only mobile game I've ever played before Diablo Immortal. And obviously I was absolutely not interested in trying out Diablo on Immortal. So yeah, I was really hurting it. But on the other hand, I was um, also kind of excited to try something new and also to see another Diablo title. I knew that they had to be working on Diablo 4 in the background. They just didn't announce it at that point, which was a pretty big mistake on Blizzard's side. And that would have saved them a lot of headache, I guess. But in hindsight, it's always easy to see. 
So anyway, I went into this with mixed feelings and then the alpha came around. As a Diablo 3 content creator, I was invited, of course. They invited pretty much all the streamers, all the YouTubers and a bunch of other people. And we were playing the game for the first time. And while I understood I wouldn't really enjoy playing on a mobile phone or tablet, you know, for extended periods of time, I actually realized that Diablo Immortal had a bit of potential. I figured that for people that like that, this would be already a good solution. I figured that it was an overall pretty good move from Blizzard to make this game in addition to a Diablo 4 PC title. So that they can, you know, bring it to a larger audience, you know, yada yada, all that stuff they uh, were saying. And that actually made sense to me. I know mobile gaming is a huge market these days and I don't really see an issue with, you know, them having a separate division working on a mobile game while they're also satisfying their old customers and fans. So I played the alpha. I started with a demon hunter, of course, and um, I had some fun. I tried out the game and we were starting to set up a max roll team. So I guess most of you know max roll by now. Uh, we tried to make the best guides possible for ARPGs. And that started with Diablo 3, which I was one of the core members on the team from the start. And then we had Diablo Immortal as the second project. Since then, it has also expanded to Lost Ark, to Diablo 2. And obviously, we are setting up Diablo 4. I guess that comes as no surprise. PoE is coming very soon. So you see the direction that this is going. And with Diablo Immortal being a kind of ARPG and a Blizzard title, it made sense to try to go into it. And the goal was to deliver high quality guides for you guys to enjoy. So I did write some of those. You might have seen them, like for example, the game walkthrough or a few other smaller guides, a few of the monk guides that were basically taken from the monk overview that I was writing. And um, yeah, I, I actually enjoyed working on that project. I figured the alpha was already in an overall okay state for a game. It was an MMO, okay, I'm more of an ARPG guy these days. I did play a lot of WoW in the past and I figured that there would be, you know, a lot of learnings they take from WoW to make Diablo Immortal great. You know, for example, the social systems, the clan structure and these kind of things. But okay, let's see where this is going. Overall, it didn't seem bad. So after the two alphas, eventually the beta came around and uh, I jumped into the game again, but I actually barely got to play the beta. The thing is, the timing was extremely bad for me. I think I was like mega blasting some new D3 season and the beta launched just right after. So I wasn't exactly very willing to sacrifice, you know, my, uh, my top ranks and all that stuff in Diablo 3 just to play the beta of a game that I've already played twice before. But I did go to check it out for a little bit, played some Necromancer, leveled a bit, saw the end game, and then my phone got destroyed and I actually couldn't proceed anymore with the beta. So I was kind of out there, but I also figured I don't really need to see that much. At that point, most of my guides were already written and I didn't really have much like retouching to do besides, you know, a few updates here and there of what they had changed in the beta. But there was actually a lot of big changes in the beta that were introduced that I never really got to experience so much. So number one are all the like daily and weekly caps. So you probably have seen this in a lot of different videos or posts about, you know, the daily gem caps, about the, the Paragon progression that is capped to two per day, the blacksmith upgrades, a lot of things that kind of like held you back as someone who wanted to grind this game, as someone who likes to play games a lot, especially like on release, on like a new season start and stuff like that, as it is customary in the ARPG genre. So obviously being an ARPG player, uh, this is something that goes completely against that spirit. This was also the time when they introduced the monetization system and they tried it out for the first time in the beta. So they had a rather small server and they had this Australian beta server with a bigger audience and they introduced the in-game shop. And at that point, I was actually yeah very demotivated. So I saw that system and I saw, you know, how uh, the monetization ties into the game, how you cannot progress your legendary gems very much. And all my hype was almost gone. Personally, I didn't see this coming and a lot of people will call me stupid for that. But 
I figured that the monetization system would be different or at the very least, you know, way less impactful, way less, you know, like holding you back as a free to play player. Or maybe they could find, you know, some kind of way to, you know, keep working with the battle pass more than anything. And I think that they just went overboard with this. So it was very difficult for me to predict how bad this monetization system would actually be. Considering I had barely played the beta, I was, you know, most of my time was spent in the alphas. And also they changed a lot of things on release. They really, you know, like, yeah, did a lot more things than was visible before. And also they nerfed a lot of things that allowed you to progress. So those caps were just like way more limited. Uh, zone events were nerfed. All that stuff that uh, we have in the game now on release. And it just made the monetization that the pay to win a way bigger factor than anticipated. So then came release. At that point, I had actually already quit the Max Roll Diablo Immortal team. So while I still had some of those guys written, I did like my last round of updates and I, I passed it on to my fellow Max Roll team members because I was simply too busy at that point. I was in three different Max Roll teams working on D3, working on Path of Exile, which is a huge project that we have to do the initial setup for. And I already knew that with this monetization model, I would not be one of those long-term players either way. So after I had already spent all this time playing the game, giving feedback, working on guides, I figured I'll definitely try out the release. This was at least the plan for a little while. Let's see how it goes. There was another stone in the road for me, which was that I was actually suddenly completely alone. So while I played alpha and beta, you know, all the time, with like my teammates, with people that I knew, on release, I was literally the only EU guy from the Maxwell boys. Everyone was actually playing on NA, including Rob, and I was considering the same, just going with everyone and having a blast for a few weeks, you know, trying to become immortals, which they actually achieved and uh, you know just play with everyone there but it would also be really scuffed with the server timings so um, i decided to actually make an eu clan and we recruited a lot of people we made three clans and suddenly had a huge community of very motivated interested people that um, yeah basically were under my command so to say that gave him back some motivation. It went really well. We had some of the top clans on the server for the longest time so far since release. A lot of people, you know, being active. Some of them also spending money, of course, but we didn't set any requirements whatsoever about, you know, how much people should pay. In general, most of you have probably seen some of my content. I'm full free to play. That was my initial plan ever since I saw the monetization model in the beta. And I just decided I don't want to do that. I don't want to pay anything to gain any kind of advantage. This is not really my style. I am going to work my way up. I'm going to, you know, fight against the odds because this is what I have always done in my life. And to be honest, I actually got at least a few weeks of enjoyment out of Diablo Immortal. So I knew this would not last for me, but I went in there with an open mind. I was like, okay, whatever, let's, let's just try it. And we, we'll see if we can compete. We'll see if we can do any fancy stuff. And I think I have proven my worth in this game. We actually became the Immortals. I actually managed to reach PvP, Legend rank, free to play. So I, I tried to do whatever I could basically to get something out of this game that I find enjoyable, to try to push myself to the next level and just also give some of the free to play players some hope because the power levels that pay to win players can reach in this game is pretty um, crucifying for the free to play players if you try to beat them in any way. But yeah, overall it went pretty well with those three clans. We lost one of them along the way because uh, I, I recruited this entire leadership, all the officers, the clan leaders for the other two clans and that stuff. Basically all from scratch, from people from my community, from people that were interested. I didn't really know any of them beforehand and yeah obviously i couldn't necessarily trust all of them so one of them kind of went rogue and um yeah they they split off and we made a new alliance with another clan later and this is how we are reigning as the immortals right now because we actually won the right of exile so that was pretty cool and 
yeah, I'm having a lot of fun, you know, interacting with a community, trying to play together with as many people as I can. And overall, a lot of people have been very supportive to me and amongst each other, I believe, along the journey. So that was actually great. Either way, I believe that Diablo Immortal is a game that did have a lot of potential, especially when I saw the alphas. So that was like over a year ago, one and a half years ago for the first alpha. If you consider this for a mobile device, considering what I know from mobile gaming, you know, Snake, this is um, an incredible step and uh, like a huge game that overall, I think most people didn't really have much issues with as a game, as, you know, something to just, you know, play on your phone in your, in your downtime. It is designed for casuals. That's kind of obvious. It is designed for pay to win. That's also pretty obvious. And uh, I don't really like both of these things. That being said, with all these caps in the game, I just don't really enjoy it. And I don't really see a lot of people sticking around the way this works right now. Even if they make like big monthly updates and these kind of things, you know, there might be new zones, new classes, new bosses, whatever. I think that the core gameplay loop that Diablo Immortal has is simply way too restricted and way too repetitive. Now, as an MMO, it's not exactly, you know, out of the ordinary that you have these daily quests and weekly caps and these kind of things. This is extremely normal. But I believe that the content of the game is simply not really like, long enough. If you go back like 17 years, wow, vanilla release, you know, that was a game that you could play for months and months and you wouldn't see it all. You know, you would you would take weeks if you're a big blaster to even get to the maximum level. It was simply a massive game on a massive scale. And Diablo Immortal is basically nothing like that as an MMO. It does have an okay campaign, I would say. You play through the game, there's like a bunch of zones. But yeah, it's all like extremely streamlined, extremely, you know, in one direction. There is not really much player agency. There's not really much like exploring and these kind of things. It's all kind of like, you know, leads you into the same path that everyone else is treading as well. And you can't really do much overall. There's like not really that much like build variety or character customization as uh, for example, in other ARPGs. And you also can't really, you know, do something out of the ordinary and spend your time in, you know, some kind of special way, farming some niche things or something like that, like in other MMOs. So while I think the art and graphics and the overall, like, you know, gameplay feel of, you know, just punching monsters and, uh, you know, getting loot and stuff is overall well designed. I think the whole gameplay loop is a bit shallow and it will not really keep a lot of people interested in long term if not extra end game systems are added on a regular basis you play through the campaign that can be done in like 15 hours or so maybe 20 hours if you're a bit more chill and then you start your end game daily loop and it just never stops you do the same dailies every single day the same bounties the same contracts it is extremely repetitive because there's very few of them in the game. There's like eight zones or so that you can traverse in like two minutes. So the zones are kind of small. Uh, the dungeons that you have to grind over and over are really repetitive. I think even something as simple as, you know, adding some of those random uh, rift modifiers that you can get from quests to every single dungeon run would have been a pretty cool idea just to like spice things up a little bit because when you grind a dungeon like over and over like 10 times 20 times 100 times in a row to get that set item it it's just it's always so scripted it's always the same stuff the bosses are always the same and um yeah there's not really it's not really a challenge in the game so i think that in general this it's, it's just like not really enough. Then there's obviously also a lot of bugs in the game, but okay, whatever. It's like, you know, fresh release and bugs happen. Um, some stuff was reported in the beta already. Some stuff wasn't. I expect that, you know, they rather focus work, working on more on like other new content or so, which yeah is okay, I guess, as long as some stuff is fixed, that is really important. But yeah, in battlegrounds, for example, you see people falling through the ground every single run almost. 
uh, you see uh, your abilities not working properly. Sometimes they just don't go off. Some people don't have health bars. Some people don't have health bar numbers. Some people are completely invisible. Um, yeah, some stuff is, is really weird. And uh, there's a lot of fixing that Blizzard has to do to kind of get it more polished, get it into a better state. But aside from this, I believe that after all this, you know, years of development, the content is just too little. So with the announcement like three, four years ago at this point and the alpha, the first time we played the game like one and a half years ago, yeah, it looked like a promising game. Maybe not something for me necessarily, but I felt like too little has happened from that point to release. Now, I'm not blaming the developers for that. The team probably did its best and there might be other reasons for that. Like, I don't even know about the internals of Blizzard and, you know, how all the structure is uh, set up. So I don't even want to like put the finger down on something there. But I think that if we judge the game as, as it is, it's just not really, yeah, a top game. Even completely leaving this point about monetization aside. But even if I was the richest person in the world, and I wouldn't really want to buy extra power in the game. You know, I, I like to challenge myself in the game and I don't want to create like an imbalance between me and my competition with an arbitrary outside of game uh, like source, so to say, whatever that may be. To me, this monetization system feels more like, uh, you know, like entering a cheat code in a game. And I was never really a fan of that. I've done a few things like that in single player games for science, you know, way back. But overall, I, I don't like cheating. I don't like to have, you know, tool assisted um, gameplay. For example, in WoW, I, uh, I didn't like add-ons very much. So I, I kind of use like the raid add-ons that my guild leaders told me to use. And that was almost about it. I didn't really like any kind of like convenience features and stuff like that. Also in D3, a lot of people ask me, for example, why I'm not using at least some macros or some uh, auto hotkey or so to like automate very simple things. And I just don't like doing that. I want to press the buttons. I want to, you know, have everything rely on my own ability to play the game. And this is what I, I live for, basically. I think also part of the reason why I played the game more than anticipated was the PC client. So this came actually as a big surprise to me. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not really a mobile gamer. And after this, I'll probably not really return to any mobile titles in the future. So the PC client was a big boon, despite its flaws and its bugs and all that stuff. I was very happy that, especially as a streamer, it's, it's a thousand times more convenient to play on the PC. I like the PC controls a lot more. You have a bigger screen, you can actually see things. And yeah, overall, that was actually a pretty good move. I know that, especially for Demon Hunter players, PC client is a nightmare. But overall, um, yeah, for me, it worked. And yeah, I was, I was very happy despite, you know, like things being clunky and it was kind of like a probably last minute, you know, decision to include it. But without the PC client, I would definitely have lost motivation earlier, I believe, because of, you know, how inconvenient it is to play on your mobile phone, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, like this, I had all the conveniences that I know from Diablo 3, from like streaming on, on the PC. And yeah, that actually worked out pretty well, I think. I think we should rather see it as a bonus. Like this was completely unexpected, I think, for pretty much anyone. And uh, it was it was great to see that they actually tried to do that. So there are some positives, and I think the PC client was definitely one of them, which is also probably a part of the reason why the game went up in flames like this from all the feedback from especially PC players that came in and played a Diablo game on their PC, expecting it to be a Diablo game, but it actually wasn't and there was you know monetization pay to win caps uh, you know all that stuff that people are simply not used to so i believe it's actually quite ironic that they tried to do this kind of like fan service i believe to make the pc client for their you know die hard diablo fans that um, just wanted to try out the game 
And I think that exactly that audience also heavily contributed to, you know, the, the negativity that the game has received over time. I think that without the mobile release, they probably wouldn't have had you know, a lot smaller numbers and a lot less income. And it might not even have been really worth for them because PC gamers, they don't really, you know, spend that much money on games, right? Compared to mobile gamers where this is like way more common to spend a lot of money on pay to win games. But yeah, this is just my observation of how things went down. I believe if there was no PC client whatsoever, I think the game would have actually been better received. As a PC gamer, the concept of pay to win is completely ridiculous to even think about, in my opinion. So it made sense that, you know, most of the negativity probably came from this crowd. When you play games on PC, especially Blizzard games, usually you, you pay once and okay, and wow, we have like a monthly subscription fee and you know, the kind of stuff. That's kind of all right. And in general, video games, at least on a PC are probably one of the cheapest hobbies you can have in this world, right? So you can buy a game and you can play it for dozens, hundreds, thousands of hours with, you know, just the box price. And uh, it, can't, it can't get better than that, basically. All you have to pay is your electricity bill. And then having a game where I can spend $25 on a single riff that lasts two minutes is obviously completely ridiculous. So I think they just went way overboard with this monetization model and uh, made maxing out the character, you know, way too far off. You know, if there was like some kind of pay to win, and there was, you know, maybe a total cost of like the absolute maximum of, I don't know what, let's say 200 bucks or something like that. I think most people wouldn't really mind. Most people probably wouldn't mind, you know, paying like the five bucks per month battle pass or even 10 bucks per month, you know, subscription basically. But uh, what we have seen in this game is, is like way beyond, you know, <laughs> the craziest things I could have ever imagined. So yeah, I think that the negativity is mostly justified. And while I don't really hate like Blizzard as a whole now, or you know, the company or the developers or something like that, I think that yeah, they they really went too far with this. And for me, this was not really a big issue because as I mentioned, I was going to go free to play no matter what. But I can definitely see the problem that, you know, other people have like less restraint, no spending money, they might be, you know, like manipulated or they might be, uh, yeah, just like more loosely uh, giving their money so that this can create actual problems for them. And with a game where you can literally spend houses on your character uh, to max it out, I think this, this is, you know, this, this is many orders of magnitudes too far. Anyway, I think I made my points pretty clear. Let's talk about my remaining plans for the game. So right now we are still the reigning immortals on the Dark Wanderer server. I am the immortal leader and we have a pretty big community here of, you know, people that, you know, are in our clans that are contributing, that are hyped. And yeah, I think that I'll probably keep going a little bit, you know, doing my dailies and you know, try to defend the rain and stuff like that. But once that one is over, I guess this is going to be the time for me to pull the plug entirely. So I'm not planning to release really any more YouTube content, maybe a highlight or something here and there, but I'm not planning to make more guides. I could make some more things, especially like monk guides, PvP guides and stuff like that, which I thought about. But yeah, for me, the motivation is pretty much gone. A lot of my, uh, you know, friends, have quit the game or are also demotivated. The Maxwell guys yeah, are all very disappointed as well. I think in general, it was kind of like a letdown, especially for the motivated, like Diablo crowd, you know, the most motivated people that, you know, really like to play the, the Blizzard games. That's, you know, the guys that I've worked with on the Maxwell guides that spent hundreds or even combined thousands of hours, you know, playing the alpha, testing, giving feedback, preparing those guides that we had on max roll. And it's actually very sad to see how it went downhill so quickly. But this is what you have. So yeah, at least I don't want to like outright quit and let everyone down. But I'm also planning a vacation very soon. So in like around a week or so, I'm going to be gone anyway. 
I, I was just like, you know, log in for a few minutes here and there. And all of that also ties a bit into this uh, final point here. So I, I was blasting through those PvP ranks. I'm kind of done with my big goal that I had for the game. I am completely capped on everything. All I can do is my daily quests to try to progress very slowly as a free-to-play player. And I mentioned the, the lack of like, you know, engaging content that the game has. There's not really much, much to do. And this is basically it. So I will be streaming probably a little bit of Immortal, but I'm actually planning to try something else for the next days. And I also have a vacation coming up in around a week from now. So I'm going to be gone then as well. And yeah, long term, I will move on from Immortal entirely, basically starting with this video. And we're going to be back to the Outer 3. So Season 27 PTR should be coming up very soon, I believe. So I expect that in the next, like, maybe two, three weeks or so. And uh, then the Season 27 will come. We're going to be mega blasting Season 27, of course. And the Diablo 4 beta is announced. So I expect that also to happen sometime in fall. Hopefully I'll be able to get in and stream it. And, you know, this is, this is really the big goal that we've been working towards for the last years. I think it's pretty obvious when you look at my stream starting screen. I had this for a long time already. So this is the target. This is the big objective for the future. So for now, I was thinking about maybe going to try Last Epoch again with all the updates they have done in the last year. I've played that game a little bit already. It looks very promising. I might go back to some PoE. I might go back to, you know, doing some small D3 project or so. And then, yeah, Season 27 is going to be blasting again. So for now, we're probably going to have a bit of like a YouTube break here as well with not really anything to cover. So to all of you who came in with this big search of Diablo Immortal and all the new subscribers from, from Diablo Immortal content on YouTube, all the new guys on Twitch, hope you're going to stick around. But obviously, if you're not interested in any of that, then I can't really keep you. I just wanted to be honest about this and, and give you a bit of a perspective of the way going forward. I went into this Diablo Immortal release quite open-minded, despite the negativity, despite the monetization model. I figured, you know, I had invested so much time into the alphas. I had written those guides. You know, I want to try the game at least. I want to make a bit of content to help people, you know, especially the free-to-play crowd like me, and, you know, to, to enjoy the game the best way possible. And I know a lot of people did and maybe still do. I know that... Yeah, I helped a lot of people with my guides and my objective was just to, you know, give either entertainment or guidance to the people that want it or need it. I am not a fan at all of how the Owl Immortal turned out in the end, but as I said, I wanted to, to do my best. I wanted to make some content and I think I gave it a fair chance. So, yeah, I said a lot of words now, so this is, is going to be the end here for, for my Diablo Immortal journey and I hope you enjoyed it along the way. And with this, I'm also going to conclude my video. So I know this has become very long. I said a lot of words. I tried to give like the full picture of yeah my impressions from start to finish. Hope you understand my perspective. And if you have anything to share about the game, about Blizzard, about you know the future, anything you want to say, let me know. And I'll be going through the comments. Thank you all for being around, for supporting me. And yeah, I will guess I'll see most of you guys in D3 and D4. I'm going to peace out here. All I'm going to upload for the Diablo Immortal is maybe like a highlight of the Rite of Exile or something like that. And I'm not even sure about this. So hope you liked it and I'll see you guys next time.